What's up again there guys, Brian here at 3TR, and before I be start with this next versus series matchup, I would just like to go on a tiny little mini rant going over a very sensitive topic involving my Final Fantasy versus matchups. Now, as I'm sure many hardcore Final Fantasy fans can attest to, there are a lot of really odd and strange names with both characters and locations that, for many people, are pronounced and sound differently to other people. So if you're one of those really hardcore fans who cannot stand the idea of listening to someone else pronounce a certain name or certain location differently than you are accustomed to, then I suggest that you park your ego at the door because I've been saying these names in cities for at least 15 years now. This is how I've been saying it, this is how I feel comfortable saying it, and I'm not going to change it because you feel it should be said a different way. At the end of the day, you know exactly what I'm talking about, so please leave your insults about you know, a certain pronunciation in the comments down below because I really hate having to delete those from all my versus series Final Fantasy matchups. So, with that mini rant out of the way, let us begin. Not much is known about Sorcerer's Adia's past, but what we do know is that when she was 5 years old, she would receive magical powers from an unknown source. Later on in her life, she would meet and marry Sid Kramer, who knew she was a sorceress, and together they would build and operate an orphanage, and she would be left there to look after many children. One of the children that she would look after is a young Squall Leonhardt when he was only 4 years old. One day, Adia would meet a dying sorceress and a teenage version of Squall who would come from the future, and as the sorceress died, Adia would receive her powers, and it was at this time that this older teenage version of Squall would tell Adia about the Seeds unit and about Garden, and would give her the Seeds loot before disappearing back into the time portal. Shocked by this experience, Adia would come to believe that this child squall would eventually grow up to defeat the sorceress and would encourage her husband, Sid, to begin plans to create this seeds unit and garden to prepare squall and the other children of their orphanage for a future battle against this sorceress. Twelve years later, after Sid Kramer had finished constructing the Lamb Garden, and after the children that Adea was watching after had arrived at Blam Garden, she would be possessed by an entity known as Ultimacia, and now under her control, she would travel around the world searching for a young woman named Eleni and make use of her power to control time. Over time, while under Ultima Sia's control, Adea would gather resources and would even go on to mobilize the Galbadian army for her own use. After being named as the new Galbadian ambassador, she would then recruit the rogue seeds cadet Cypher and together the two would teleport away, but not before she would encounter the newly promoted seeds member Squall Leonhardt and his allies. Squall Leonhardt and his allies would attempt to assassinate Sorcerer's Idea, but would fail, and after being injured by Sorcerer's Idea, Squall and his allies were captured. After Squall and his allies escaped capture, they would then divide into two teams and would discover that Idea was planning an attack on Balam Garden. One team went off to stop a missile strike on Balam Garden, while the other party would attempt to warn Balam Garden of the attack. Both parties would succeed in their objectives and after a failed missile strike, Sorcerer's Idiot would take control of Galabanian Garden and would attack Blam Garden head-on. During the intense battle, Sorcerer's Idiot would battle Squall and his allies and would be defeated. After being nearly killed, Ultima C would break her control over Adea and would take control of Renor Hartley's body, giving Cypher orders to head to Lunatic Pandora. Squall and his allies would reunite and meet up with Adea at her old orphanage, and it was here she would explain to Squall and his allies about Ultima C's plan to find the girl named Eleni and use a spell called Time Compression to destroy the world. Feeling remorseful for her actions under Ultima C's control, Adea would join Squall and his allies and help them find Eleni. After finding Eleni, Adia would relinquish her powers to Renoa. After this, Adia would return to her old orphanage while Squall and his allies would use Eleni's powers to travel into the future, and it is there that they would battle and defeat Ultima Sia, thereby coming full circle to the very moment Adia was first granted her sorceress power. 
Once Squall and his allies return to Blam Garden in the present, Idea and Sid would celebrate their victory over Ultima Sia. Lulu was raised on the island of Besaid as an orphan alongside Waka and his brother Chapu. Lulu's parents were killed by Sin when she was five years old, and over time, Lulu would become romantically involved with Chapu, who considered proposing to her, but instead decided to join the Crusaders only to be killed in an operation against Sin somewhere near the island of Jose. At the age of 20, Lulu would study the art of black magic, and before becoming a guardian for Yuna, she would go on to protect two other summoners whose pilgrimages both ended in failure before they could reach Xanarkand. Being inexperienced at the time, her first summoner, Lady Genum, was killed in the Cavern of the Stolen Faith during an attempt to acquire the Aeon Yojimbo. The second guardian she protected alongside fellow guardian Waka was Father Zook, whose pilgrimage ended at the Calmlands when he chose not to continue. After returning to the island of Besaid with Waka, she learned that Yuna herself wanted to become a summoner like her father, and though Lulu was very hesitant at first, she accepted Yuna's decision and agreed to become her guardian, alongside Waka and Yuna's own personal protector, Kamari. During Yuna's final trials to become a summoner, she would then encounter the young blitzball player, Titus, who looked a lot like Waka's younger brother, Chapu. Lulu would travel with Yuna and her fellow guardians to many locations, witnessing the destruction that Sin brought to the land of Spira, and over the course of Yuna's pilgrimage, she would even be accompanied by the legendary guardian that protected Yuna's own father, Orin, as well as Yuna's own cousin, Riku. Lulu also took part in many key battles over the course of Yuna's pilgrimage, which including rescuing Yuna from a band of outbet during the Luka Blitzball tournament, fighting against Maester Seymour Guado over a series of multiple encounters, and even fought against the unsent spirit of Lady Unaleska, thereby ending the tradition of the final summoning. After defeating Unaleska, Yuna and her guardians would battle Sin head-on, and having injured it, would gain access to its inner body, and it was there that they not only defeated High Summoner Braska's final summoning, which had been Titus' father, Jekt, but they would go on to defeat the creator of Sin itself, Yuvyevin, thereby ending the cycle of death that had plagued the Land of Sparrow for generations. Two years later, after Yu Evans' defeat, Lulu would return to the island of Besaid, where she would go on to marry Waka and would give birth to their child during the events of Yuna's latest adventures to save Spira. Well, what's up again there, guys? Brian here at 3TR, here to bring you my next versus series match for my Season 3. I would just like to start off by apologizing for the long wait, but for those of you who do follow me on social media, I'm sure you can understand exactly what has been causing all the major delays. But I'm past all of those now and ready to get right back into work bringing this versus series matchup of two very powerful black magic users with pitting Final Fantasy VIII's Sirs Adea against Final Fantasy X's Lulu. As you can see from the length of this video, it's going to be significantly shorter than usual, and due to the particular nature of this matchup, I did have to make a few modifications in order to make this particular style workable. But I hope you guys will find it still entertaining, and without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the first category as I analyze both of their physical capabilities. Now I'm going to be honest, right out of the gate, there's really not too many differences between Sources Adea and Lulu in a physical sense due to their particular functions as combatants. Both of them are 5'5 human females, and both combatants are not quite in their physical primes. Seeing as how from multiple sources that I researched, a human woman's physical prime is about 30 years of age, Lulu only being about 22 during the events of Summoner Yuna's pilgrimage to destroy Sin, has not quite reached her physical prime, while solid estimates would place Sources Idea's age during the events of Final Fantasy VIII for her being in her, let's say, late 30s to early 40s, meaning that she is past her physical prime. But the straining strength of their magic has allowed both combatants to perform very well in combat, giving both of them a good amount of physical stamina. Both of them do suffer from the prime weakness of being extremely vulnerable to physical attacks, as proven over the course of multiple engagements for Lulu, and the two primary engagements that Sorceress Adia takes part in in Final Fantasy VIII. So in a whole, both Sorceress Adia and Lulu operate under the same physical limitations and weaknesses that one would expect from two dedicated magic users in the Final Fantasy franchise, and it is for these reasons that I declare Sorceress Adia and Lulu equals in physical capabilities.
Now before I begin, I would like to state right now that due to the quality and capabilities of powers that both of these combatants have access to in canon, in order to make this matchup as even as possible, I will be forced to have to strip these two of a couple of their key magical attacks. For starters, I will not be granting either character access to the death spell, obviously, and for Sorceress Adea, she will not be allowed to use the spell Silence on Lulu, but for Lulu, I will only be granting her access to any magical spells that are located only within her specific section of the sphere grid. So spells like Drain, Osmosis, and shockingly Ultima will not be access to her. And to go on a little bit of a rant, what the hell is Ultima doing sitting dead center in Kamari's section of the sphere grid? Who put that there? It makes no sense. But with that out of the way, let us begin by comparing their magical abilities. Though Adea was granted magical powers at the age of 5, it wasn't until she became much older and was granted the sorceress power from Ultima C herself that she would become extremely powerful. While under Ultima C's control, Adea's collection of powers were nothing less than top tier. A majority of her offensive magical attacks were nothing that most physical combatants wouldn't be quite familiar with, but they were without question very powerful. She also had access to defensive magical abilities at her disposal, like Reflect, which had the ability to send an opponent's magical attack right back at the sender, as well as the ability known as Dispel, which could neutralize any form of magical shields or power-ups that an opponent may be using. She also had access to the ability known as Slow, which allowed her to slow down the combative performance of her opponent. Her natural magical defenses were so overtly strong that she was naturally immune to any specific status effect magical spells like Poison, Sleep, or Petrify. However, Adea did have access to two extremely powerful identical magical spells, one of which she shared only with Ultima Sia herself. The first was her use of the Maelstrom spell, which could not only take about half an opponent's health away, but it could instantly cast a curse spell on them, thereby preventing their opponent access to their most powerful attacks to use against her. Adia's second most dangerous spell was her ability to use her own Limit Breaker attack, which was known as Ice Strike, which allowed Adia to summon a set of physical ice spikes, thereby striking at an opponent causing serious physical damage. In conclusion, even though Sorcerer's Adia was meant to be nothing more than a simple puppet for Ultima Sia to control, Ultima Sia made sure that her puppet would be able to hold her own in just about any combative situation. By the time Yuna and her guardians had finally defeated Sin and Yu Yevon himself, Lulu's extensive amount of combative experience over the course of three pilgrimages made her one of the most powerful users of black magic in all of Spiro. She had access to an extensive collection of magical spells which made her a key factor in many of the party's more difficult battles. Her natural magical defenses were unquestionably very strong, but apart from her more powerful magical abilities, she also had access to the special abilities such as Reflex and Focus at her disposal. Reflex allowed her to increase the evasive capabilities of herself and her party members, and Focus allowed her to amplify the potential strength of both her offensive magical abilities as well as the natural magical defenses. Lulu's most powerful offensive attack was the use of her Fury Overdrive, which allowed her to fire off any of her magical spells and raft fire sensation, and it was so powerful that it was even capable of punching through any opponent's magical reflective barriers. As the party's primary offensive magic user, she may have been vulnerable against an opponent's physical strikes, and may have lacked any potential white magical defenses to aid her in battle, fighting alongside her allies made her a primal offensive magical weapon. From face value, it is clear that though Adea and Lulu do share a number of offensive magical capabilities, they both have developed into two very different types of magical combatants. Sources Adea was claimed to be possibly one of the most powerful users of magic in her world at the time, but I don't see this as a major achievement as she was living in an era where there were not many combatants that were even interested in being dedicated magic users. As members of Seeds were typically mostly physical combatants trained to operate as a unit, which is the very form of combat that Sources Adea would be weak against. While Lulu grew up and developed into an era where the need for dedicated magic users was not only common, it was essential to any party's survival across Spira. There is no question in my mind that in a straightforward offensive manner, 
Even comparing the offensive magic spells that Adea and Lulu both share, it is Lulu who would just naturally be more offensively powerful. However, it is with Adea's use of her much more exclusive magical spells like Maelstrom and the use of her practical magical defensive spells that she would ultimately be able to neutralize Lulu's overwhelming offensive might. As Maelstrom alone would prevent Lulu access to her Overdrive Fury attack, which is the only ability that Lulu has at her disposal that could punch through Adea's reflective magical barriers. And while those magical barriers are up, none of Lulu's magical offensive spells would be of any use. Adea may not know nearly as many spells or even be as offensively powerful as Lulu. She does have the spells necessary to not only make Lulu's offensive spells useless, while also being able to attack her in ways that Lulu has no idea how to defend against. And it is for these reasons that I give Sources Adea the edge in magical and special abilities. I'm going to be honest here with you folks, there's really not much to analyze from this point on. In terms of weapons, Sources Adia doesn't carry a physical weapon, and Lulu's only primary weapon is... a doll. <sighs> yeah, I don't think that's going to be very significant in this matchup. In terms of their battle tactics, their own magical capabilities that I've already discussed practically already describe their battle tactics. Though Lulu is undoubtedly far more offensively powerful than Adea and has far more actual combat experience, in all honesty, Lulu is nothing more than a one-trick pony. All she can do is attack, which, if I can go off track a little bit, makes it really one of the main reasons why the party of Final Fantasy X is my favorite party throughout the entire franchise. Until the player starts making each character go beyond the boundaries of each character's specific section of the sphere grid, each character has a specific function on the team. Each member has their own strengths and weaknesses that another party member can make up for, and it's one's ability to group them properly that will allow you to gain victory in many of the more tougher battles throughout the game. But against Source's Adea, she may not be as offensively powerful, she is flexible enough with a much narrower set of spells to change up her approach, neutralize her opponent's strengths, then discover their weaknesses and wear them down over time, and that is ultimately what would allow Sorcerer's Idea to achieve victory against Lulu. Now, in Lulu's defense, if she were to go into this fight knowing what to expect from Sorcerer's Idea, or even had the aid of Yuna's white magical spells to aid her, even without the use of her Aeons, she would be able to defeat Sorcerer's Idea. The fight between Sources Adia and Lulu would start off like most fights do, as both combatants would fire off a series of probing offensive spells against each other to simply chest out each other's strengths. After the first initial moments, Sources Adia would recognize that Lulu is far more combatively experienced and offensively powerful than her, and she would immediately cast her Maelstrom spell on Lulu, cursing Lulu and cutting her health in half. In retaliation, Lulu counters with a devastating flare attack. Taking damage, Adia would then cast a reflex spell on herself, causing Lulu to pause as she realizes that without access to her fury overdrive, none of her spells can get through, and she would just end up attacking herself. Seeing the sudden pause in Lulu's offense and the fear in Lulu's eyes, Sources Adia recognizes that Lulu is unable to fight back and has no way to defend against her maelstrom spell. So she casts it again, and again, and again. Lulu tries to react to this assault by using her special abilities Reflex and Focus, but all of this does is buy Lulu some extra time. To counter this, Sources Dia would then cast Slow on Lulu, decreasing Lulu's ability to counter as Adia continues her magical assault. Eventually, the constant Maelstrom spells would wear Lulu down, and now with Adia facing a beaten down and exhausted Lulu, Sources Dia would cast her own Ice Strike Limit Breaker attack and would finish Lulu off. I declare Sources Adia, the puppet, the winner. Now I would just like to say that in closing, if any of you felt that this match was a bit underwhelming and uninteresting, I would just like to apologize. The fact is, is that I did a white magic user matchup years ago between Aerith and Yuna, and since then I had always wanted to do a matchup between two black magic users, and for some reason, visually, Adeo and Lulu just look so alike to me. 
Please remember that this outcome is just my own personal opinion, though I can't imagine anyone bringing up any solid defenses for Lulu in this matchup, but you can try. If you happen to like this matchup, please feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to check me in my future Versus Series matchups and other videos. And like always, thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and to apologize for the long wait, I decided to push ahead one of my most anticipated matchups of the season. So here's a quick preview of it, and I hope you guys enjoy.